Hands up! Damn you! Let me go! Giles, come on, Giles. Out of my way, Herrick. I bring evidence. You can't go in there, Giles. It's a court. Pray, be calm a moment. You, Mr. Hale, go in there and demand I speak. A moment, sir, a moment. Don't be hanging my wife! How dare you come roaring into this court? Are you daft, Corey? You're not a Boston judge yet, Hathorne. You'll not call me daft. Who is this man? Giles Corey, sir, and a more contentious. I am asked the questions and I am old enough to answer them. Sir, my name is Corey. Giles Corey, sir. I have 600 acres of land and timber to go with it, and it is my wife that is being accused right now. And how do you imagine to help her cause with such a contemptuous riot? Now be gone. Your old age alone keeps you out of jail for this. They be telling lies about my wife, sir, I- Do you take it upon yourself to determine what this court shall believe and what it shall set aside? Your Excellency, we mean no disrespect for- Disrespect indeed. It is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme government of this province. Do you know it? Your Excellency, I only said she were reading books and she came and they came and took her out of my house. Books? What books? It is my third wife, sir. I never had no wife be so taken with books, and I only met to find out the cause as to why. I just... Do you see, if we're no witch I blamed her for. I broke in charity with the woman. I broke charity with her. Excellency, he claims hard evidence for his wife's defense. I think that in all justice, you must. Then let him submit his evidence in a proper affidavit. You are certainly aware of our procedure here, Mr. Hale. Herrick, clear this room. We are desperate, sir. We come here three days now and have not been heard. Who is this man? Francis Nurse, Your Excellency. His wife's Rebecca that were condemned this morning. Indeed, I am amazed to find you in such an uproar. I have only report of your good character, Mr. Nurse. I think they both must be arrested in contempt, sir. Let you write a plea, and in due time I will. Excellency, we have proof for your eyes, sir. God forbid you close your eyes to it. The girls, the girls, sir, the girls are frauds. What's that? We have proof of it, sir. They are deceiving you. This is contempt, sir. Contempt. Peace, Judge Hathorne. Do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? I surely do, sir, and I think that you must be a wise judge to be what you are. And you do know that near to 400 are in jails from Marblehead to Lynn upon my signature. I, uh... And 72 condemned to hang by that signature. Excellency, I never thought to say it to such a weighty judge, but you are deceived. Mary Warren, what are you about here? She would like to speak with the deputy governor. Did you not tell me Mary Warren was sick in bed? She were, your honor. When I go to fetch her for the court last week, she said she were sick. She's been striving with her soul all week, your honor. She comes now to tell the truth of this to you. Who is this? John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, your excellency. This man is mischief. I think you must hear the girl, sir. She- Peace. Tell us what you would, Mary Warren. She never saw no spirits, sir. Never saw no spirits? Never! She has a signed deposition, sir. Oh no, I accept no depositions. Tell me, Mr. Proctor, have you given this story out to the village? We have not. They've come to overthrow the court, sir! This man is- I pray you, Mr. Paris. Do you know, Mr. Proctor, that the entire contention of the state of these trials is that the voice of heaven is speaking through the children? I know that, sir. And you, Mary Warren, what came you to cry out people for sending their spirits against you? It were pretense, sir. I can't hear you. It were pretense, she says. 
Ah, and the other girls? Susanna Walcott? And the others? They're also pretending? Aye, sir. Indeed. Excellency, you surely cannot think to let a vile lie be spread in open court. Indeed not, but it strike hard upon me that she may dare come here with such a tale. Now, Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether I shall hear you or not, it is my duty to tell you this. We burn hot fire here, and it melts down all concealment. I know that, sir. Let me continue. I understand well a husband's tenderness may drive him to extravagance in defense of his wife. Are you certain in your conscience, mister, that your evidence is the truth? It is, and you will surely know it. And you thought to declare this revelation in the open court before the public? I thought I would, aye, with your permission. Now, sir, what is your purpose for doing so? I, I would free my wife, sir. There lurks nowhere in your heart, nor anywhere in this spirit, any desire to undermine this court? Why, why no, sir. <clears throat> I, uh, your excellency? I think it be my duty, sir, and John, you, John, you'll not deny it, but when, when we went to get his wife, he damned the court and he ripped your warrant. Now you have it. He did that, Mr. Hale? Aye, he did. It were temper, sir. I knew not what I did. Mr. Proctor. Yes, sir. Have you ever seen the devil? No, sir. You are in all respects a gospel Christian. I am, sir. Such a Christian, but that will not come to church but once a month. Not come to church? I have no love for Mr. Paris, sir, but I surely do love God. He plows on Sunday, sir. Plow on Sunday? I, I think it be evidence, John. I, I am an official of the court. I cannot keep it. I have once or twice plowed on Sunday, sir, and I have three children, and until last year the land gave little. You'll find other Christians that do plow on Sunday if the truth be known. Your Honor, I cannot think that you would judge the man on such evidence. I judge nothing. I tell you straight, mister, I have seen marvels in this court. I have seen people choked before my eyes by spirits. I have seen them stuck by pins and slashed by daggers. I have until this moment not the slightest reason to suspect that the children may be deceiving me. Do you understand my meaning? Excellency, does it not strike upon you that so many of these women have lived so long with such an upright reputation, and now- Do you read the gospel, Mr. Proctor? I read the gospel. I think not, or you should surely know that Cain were an upright man, but yet he still killed Abel. Ah, the gospel tells us that. Well, who tells us Rebecca Nurse murdered seven babies by sending out her spirit on them? It is the children only, and this one will swear she lied to you. Aye, she's the one. Proctor, this morning your wife sent me a claim in which she states that she is pregnant now. My wife? Pregnant. There be no sign of it. We have examined her body. But if she says she's pregnant, then she is. Mr. Danforth, that woman will never lie, sir. Will not. Never, sir. Never. We have thought it too convenient to be credited. However, if I should tell you now that I will let her keep another month and if she could begin to show her natural signs, you shall have her living yet another year until she's delivered. What say you to that? Come now, you say your only purpose is to save your wife. Good then, she is saved at least this year, and a year is long. What say you, sir? It is done now. Will you drop this charge? I, I think I think I cannot. Then your purpose is somewhat larger. He's come to overthrow the court, your honor. These are my friends. Their wives are also accused. I judge you not, sir. I am ready to hear your evidence. I come not to hurt the court. I only... Marshal, go into court and bid Judge Stoughton and Judge Sewell declare recess for one hour and let them go to the tavern if they will. All witnesses and prisoners are to be kept in the building. I, I am sure of it, Marshal. Now, what deposition do you have for us, Mr. Proctor? And I beg you be clear and open as the sky and honest.
I am no lawyer, sir, so I'll- The pure of heart need no lawyers. Proceed. Will you read this first, sir? It's sort of a- it's, it's sort of a testament of all the people that sign, speaking to the good reputation of Rebecca Nurse, of my wife Rebecca, and to Martha Corey. Their good opinion. They are land-holding farmers and members of the church. Now, if you'll notice, sir, they, they've known the women many years and never saw no signs of any dealings with the devil. How many names are here? Ninety-one, Your Excellency. These people should be summoned for questioning. Mr. Danforth, I gave them all my word that no harm would come to them for signing this. This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defense an attack upon the court? Can no one- All innocent and Christian people are happy for the courts in Salem. These people are gloomy for it. <laughs> and I think you will want to know, for each and every one of them, what discontents them with you. I think they ought to be examined, sir. It is not necessarily an attack, I think. Yet. These are all covenanted Christians, sir. Then I am sure they have nothing to fear. Mr. Cheever, draw warrants for each of these names and arrest them all for examination. Now, mister, what other information do you have for us? You may sit, Mr. Nurse. I have brought trouble on these people. I have. No, old man, you have not hurt these people if they are of good conscience. But you must understand, sir, that a person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. There are no road in between. This is a sharp time now, a precise time. We live no longer in the dusky afternoon when evil mixed itself with good and befuddled the world. Now, by God's grace, the shining sun is up and them that fear not light will surely praise it. I hope you will be one of those. She is not hardy, I see. No, sir, she is not. Now, Mary, remember what the angel Raphael said to the boy Tobias? Remember it? I Do that which is good, and no harm shall come to thee. I Come, man, we wait you. John, my deposition, give him mine. Ah, this is Mr. Corey's deposition. Oh? What lawyer drew this, Corey? You know, I have never hired a lawyer in my life, Hathorne. It is very well phrased. My compliments. And Mr. Paris, if Mr. Putnam is in the court, will you please bring him in? You have no legal training, is that correct, Mr. Corey? I have the best, sir. I've been 33 times in court this year, mm. sir, and always the plaintiff, too. Oh, then you're much put upon. I am never put upon. I know my rights, sir, and I will have them. You know, your father tried a case of mine. Might be 35 years ago, I think. Indeed. He never spoke of it to you? No, I cannot recall it. That's strange. He gave me nine pound damages. He were a fair judge, your father. You see, I had a white mare that time, and this fellow came to borrow this mare. And ah, there he is. Mr. Putnam, I have here an accusation from Mr. Corey that you coldly prompted your daughter to cry witchery on George Jacobs that is now in jail. It is a lie. Mr. Putnam states that your charge is a lie. What say you to that? A fart on Thomas Putnam's what I say to that. What proof do you submit for your charge, sir? My proof is there. If Jacobs hangs for a witch, he forfeit his property. That's law. And there's none but Putnam with the coin to buy such a place so great. <sighs> Do you see? This man is killing his neighbors for their land. But proof, sir. Proof. The proof is there. I have it on an honest man who heard Putnam say it. The day his daughter cried out for Jacobs, he said she'd given him a fair gift of land. And the name of this man? What name? The man that gave you this information. Why, well, I, I can't give you his name. And why not? You know why not. He'll lie in jail if I give you his name. This is contempt of court, Mr. Danforth. 
You will surely tell us the name. I will not give you no name. I mentioned my wife's name once and I'll burn in hell long enough for that one. I stand mute. In that case, I have no choice but to arrest you for being in contempt of court. Do you know that? This is a hearing. You cannot clap me in contempt in a hearing. Oh, it is a proper lawyer. Do you wish for me to declare the full court in session right now or do you give me a reply? I cannot give you a name, sir. I cannot. You are a foolish old man. Mr. Cheever, let the record show that court is now in session. Now, Mr. Corey. Your Honor, he has the story in confidence, sir. He... The devil lives on such confidences. <laughs> Without confidence, there would be no conspiracy, Your Honor. I think it must be broken, sir. Old man, if your informant tells the truth, let him come here openly like a decent man. But if he hide in anonymity, I must know why. Now, sir, the government and central church demand of you the name of him who reported Mr. Thomas Putnam a common murderer. Excellency! Mr. Hale? We cannot blink it more. There's a prodigious fear of this court in the country. Then there's a prodigious guilt in the country. Are you afraid to be questioned here? I might only fear the Lord, sir, but there is a fear in the country nevertheless. Reproach me not with fear in the country. There's a fear in the country because there is a moving plot to topple Christ in the country. But it does not follow that everyone accused is a part of it. No uncorrupted man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. None. You are under arrest for contempt of this court. Now sit you down and take counsel with yourself or you will sit in the jail until you decide to answer all questions. your throat, Putnam, I'll kill you! Peace, guys, peace. Now we'll prove ourselves. We will. <sighs> Say nothing more, John. He's only playing you. He means to hang us all. This is a court of law, mister. I'll have no effrontery here. Forgive him, sir, for his old age. Peace, guys. We'll prove it now. Now, Mary. Remember what the angel said to that boy. You can't cry right now. You gotta be strong. Let that be your rock. Now, sir, this is this is Mary Warren's deposition. And I would ask you to remember, sir, while you read it until two weeks ago, she was no different than the other children are here today. You saw her scream. You saw her. She howled. She swore familiar spirits choked her, and she even testified that Satan, in the form of a woman, now in jail, tried to win her soul away. Now, and then when she refused... We know all of this. I, sir, but she swears now that no spirits ever came to hurt her. She saw nothing, vague or clear, and she says her friends are lying too. Excellency, a moment. I think it goes to the heart of the matter. It surely does. I cannot say he's an honest man, for I know I know him little. But in all justice, sir, a claim so we cannot be argued by a farmer. In God's name, stop here and send him home and let him come back with a lawyer. Now, look you, Mr. Hale. Excellency, I have signed 72 death warrants. I am a minister of the Lord. I dare not take a life without there be proof so immaculate, no slightest qualm of conscience may doubt it. Mr. Hale, you surely do not doubt my justice. I have signed away this morning the soul of Rebecca Nurse, Your Honor. I'll not, I'll not conceal it. My hand shakes yet with a wound. I pray you, sir, this argument let lawyers present to you. Mr. Hale, believe me. For a man of such terrible learning, you are most bewildered. I hope you will forgive me. I have been 32 years at the bar, sir, and I should be confounded where I called upon to defend these people. Let you consider now. Now, Mr. Proctor, Mr. Nurse, Mr. Corey, and I bid you all do likewise. In an ordinary crime, how does one defend the accused? One calls up witnesses to prove his innocence. But witchcraft is ipso facto, 
on its face and by its nature, an invisible crime, is it not? Therefore, who may possibly be witness to it? The witch and the victim. None other. Now, we cannot hope the witch will accuse herself, granted. Therefore, we must rely upon her victims, and they do testify. The children that were most eager for all their confessions. Therefore, what is left for a lawyer to bring out? I think I have made my point, have I not? But this child claims that the girls, they are not truthful. If that be so, that is precisely what I am about to consider. What more may you ask of me? Do you doubt my probity? I surely do not, sir. Let you consider it then. And let you put your heart to rest. Her deposition, Mr. Proctor.